Okay, and shall we start to the today's the um, seminar series? And today we are the very uh, glad to have the very famous professor from the University of Tokyo. The professor uh, Noritaka Mizuno is very famous professor, one of the 30, uh, top 30 professor in the first program in Japan. And uh, in the <coughs> custom, that I briefly introduce his the, um, career. And uh, Dr. Uh, Mizuno received a bachelor's degree in the synthesis chemistry at the University of Tokyo in 1980. And then the, he uh, joined to the graduate school and received a PhD at 1985. So he's uh, quite young. <laughs> And uh, <coughs> he's continued his study to the heterogeneous catalyst as a research associate at the same press. And in 1989, he uh, did a postdoctoral uh, research with the um, professor Richard Finke uh, at the University of Oregon. And 1990, uh, he back to the Japan as an uh, associate professor at the Catalyst Research Center, Hokkaido University. And uh, in 1994, 1994 he moved to the Institute of Industrial Science at the University of Tokyo, and then he moved to the Department of Applied Chemistry of the uh, University of Tokyo. And <clears throat> he has already published uh, the 262 original paper and uh, 50 reviews and 30 characters, uh, uh, chapters in the book, but the, his publication always appeared in the very uh, impacted journal like uh, the Nature of the Science. And he always work on the um, uh, heteropoly acid. Therefore, today uh, we have the very interesting talk on the uh, highly functionalized uh, polyhex polyoxometallate based nanostructured catalyst. So, the Professor, Mr. Please, thank you. Very thank much. you, Professor Ishihara. First of all, I would like to express my thanks to WPI program, this university. Today, I would like to talk design of highly functionalized polyoxometallate-based nanostructured catalyst. First, oh, what is this? Professor Ogon, what is this? Right, right. So, you have two means considering this labyrinth. Two minutes. After that, I have question for you. Two minutes. Okay? Okay. So, please answer precisely. Okay. So, people who consider just inside, this is, for example, this is in the, this exit. So, who consider? Raise your hand. Just inside. Okay. Just outside, like this. <laughs> Raise your hand. Nobody. So, the people who consider just like this, three dimensional consideration. Raise your hand. Oh, that's okay. So when I visit US or China, I always do this question. In US, 30% like this, three-dimensional consideration. In Europe, 20%, three-dimensional consideration. However, in Japan, especially in the University of Tokyo professors, more than 99% professor consider just the inside. <laughs> so Japanese people usually very precisely consider. And they have only one answer. But in Europe, in US, or in, even in China, they have various kind of answers. So we Japanese now should consider from various directions. That's very important, I think. Even in this university, maybe more than 90% student, professors, concern, just inside like this.
So about 10 years ago, I considered how to synthesize solid materials, solid materials from solution. Last year, I was invited in Switzerland ambassador. There, there is a president of ETH. At that time, I said, I would like to synthesize batteries from solution. He said, no success. But I'm thinking it's lucky for me. Nobody considered the same. 10 years ago, I have this kind of ideas from solutions. I would like to synthesize batteries, solid materials at molecular or atomic levels. That is my strategy. And our group consists of mainly three groups. One is battery group. One is heterogeneous catalyst group. And one is molecular catalyst group. Today, my talk is based on molecular catalyst. This is a picture of Berzelius, who established the word catalysis, and who is the first author reported polyoxometallate oxide anion clusters. This is a typical oxide cluster, so-called cane type polyoxometallate, which have been industrially utilized for several processes. You can put various kind of purple element as heteroatoms in the center of this cane type polyoxometallate. In addition, you can put various kind of green element. This green element can be exchanged with blue metals. Therefore, you can introduce various kind of metals just inside the polyoxometallite. In addition, there are various kind of structures of polyoxometallite. On this standpoint, polyoxometallite is a good candidate to design homogeneous catalyst at molecular levels. On the basis of this strategy, we design highly functionalized nanomaterials by here three-dimensional control of structures and morphologies based on po polyoxometallate. First, we design this kind of polyoxometallate. And these polyoxometallates are usually anions. Therefore, by choosing appropriate counter cations, the complexes have these nanostructures. This nanospace can be utilized as a space for catalysis, as a space for sorption, as a space for separation. In addition, we can kinetically control morphologies of the particles. So let me talk design of highly efficient POM-based homogeneous oxidation catalysis as shown here. This is a diperoxotansen dimer, which can activate hydrogen peroxide and a good catalyst for epoxidation of allylic alcohols. When you introduced one selenium ion between these two tungsten atoms, this is a good catalyst for epoxidation of homoallylic alcohols. This is a so-called lacunary polyoxometallate. You can put various kind of transition metal into this vacant site. But 
Only this can well catalyze epoxidation of simple olefin. This can well activate hydrogen peroxide on these two tungsten atoms. When you can introduce divanadium site into this bacon site, this divanadium site can well activate hydrogen peroxide. And this is a good catalyst for epoxidation of terminal olefin. When you introduced diiron site into this bacon site, oxidation of alkanes, olefins, with hydrogen peroxide or molecular oxygen can be possible. When you introduce dicapper site into this bacon site, this dicapper site activates two molecules of alkyne. And this is a good catalyst for alkyne alkyne homocoupling reaction. In addition, usually we can synthesize this kind of polyoxometallate in water. However, very recently, we succeeded in the synthesis of this kind of polyoxometallate in organic solvent. That means we can more finely tune the catalytically active site in polyoxometallate. These polyoxometallates are oxide anion cluster. Therefore, they, have, they show oxidative stability. That means we can achieve high turnover numbers and high atom efficiency. The reason why we introduce two metals into polyoxometallate. One, there are three reasons. One is activation of oxygen substrate can be possible when used these models. Second, activation of oxygen by using two metals can be possible. Third, these two metals can stabilize two molecules. For example, coupling, alkyne alkyne homocoupling reaction can be possible. Therefore, by the introduction of two metals, we expect specific catalysis by using these sites. Let me talk first catalysis by this lacunary polyoxometallate. This tungsten site can well activate hydrogen peroxide. And these two tungsten atoms, or these two tungsten atoms, a corresponding active site for activation of hydrogen peroxide. This will catalyze this kind of olefins with high selectivity and high hydrogen peroxide efficiency. And also, this is a bulky catalyst. Therefore, this lactary polyoxometallate shows specific radio selectivity like this. And this is also a good catalyst for oxidation of sirenes with hydrogen peroxide. There's kind of sirenes can be converted into the corresponding cyanol. Even this kind of alkoxy cyanol can be obtained in high yield. Today, I could not show the detailed reaction mechanism, but I said I would like to say these two tungsten atoms are corresponding active site for activation of hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, we consider we extract essential active site from this polyoxometallate. 
and I started extraction of catalytically active site from this polyoxometallate first. We successfully synthesized dipyroxo tungsten dime, but the catalytic activity is much lower for tungsten atom. And then we consider introduction of hetero atom between them. And DFT calculations show that introduction iodide is the best. However, from the standpoint of inorganic synthesis, it is not successful. And second selection is introduction of selenium between them. Catalytic activity much enhanced like this. And very recently, we observed introduction of proton much enhanced catalytic activity like this. This is the highest value for epoxidation of cyclooctane shown so far reported. First, I would like to talk selenium bridge dipyroxo tungsten dime. This is a good catalyst for epoxidation of homoallylic alcohols with hydrogen peroxide. You see here, various kind of homoallylic alcohol can be converted into corresponding epoxide in high E. In addition, various kind of allylic alcohols converted into corresponding epoxide in high yield. This is a proposed reaction mechanism. First, hydrogen peroxide can be activated by two tungsten atoms to form dipyroxide species. First. Second, homo you see here very strong hydrogen bond between homoallylic alcohol and catalyst. This is a proposed reaction mechanism. Hydrogen peroxide is activated by the catalyst. At the same time, substrate of homoallylic alcohols also activate. By this reason, this selenium bridge dipyroxo tungsten dimer showed very high catalytic activity for epoxidation of homoallylic alcohols. When we introduced proton into the solution of dipyroxo tungsten dimer, catalytic activity enhanced like this. When we observed the solution, when we added 0.5 equi equivalent of proton, the chemical shift changed from here to here. And we observed single species. <coughs> Fortunately, we successfully isolated this catalyst. Proto is here. And when we dissolve this solid, we observe single species. The structure is stable, even in the solvent. This proton containing tungsten tetrama is a good catalyst. You see here, there's kind of orifins sulfide, amines, and the silane could selectively be converted into corresponding oxidation product. Next, I moved on this topic, activation of hydrogen peroxide by dibanadium site. 
then we introduced divanage um, site into the vacant site of this lacunary silico deca tank state. We observed this kind of this new hydroxo bridge divanadium site. This site will activate hydrogen peroxide by two vanadium. And this is a good catalyst for epoxidation of this kind of terminal orifice. You see here high yield, high selectivity, and high hydrogen peroxide efficiency could be achieved. Even these non conjugated dyeing can be converted into the corresponding terminal epoxide. This is a detailed reaction mechanism proposed by kinetics and spectroscopic data. First, this divanadium, this mu hydroxo bridge divanadium containing polyoxometalate can react hydrogen peroxide to form this kind of hydroxo hydroperoxo species. This further dehydrated to form Peroxo space. This is a tentative structure. We are now attempting to isolate this kind of actual active species. This further reacts with orifin to form epoxide and the original catalyst. Kinetic data were reproduced this reaction mechanism. And recently, when we found uh, when we change silicon to phosphorus, catalytic activity much enhanced like this. So this phosphorus containing the vanadium site is a good catalyst for epoxidation of this orifin. You see here, our catalyst shows high yield, high turnover numbers in comparison with these catalysts, so and so far reported to be active for this kind of reaction. This kind of electron deficient orifice can be converted into the corresponding epoxide in high to moderate yield, as shown here. We also observe specific chemoselectivities like this. The same catalyst show high catalytic activity for epoxidation of simple orphan as shown here. You see here high yield. And the same catalyst can be applicable to larger scale production of epoxide like this. The same catalyst also show high catalytic activity for hydroxylation of arcanes, as shown here. For example, cyclohexane can be converted into corresponding alcohols in high yield and high hydrogen peroxide efficiency. Not only cyclic arcanes, but also Linear alkane of normal hexane can be converted into corresponding alcohol in high selectivity. This turnover frequency and hydrogen peroxide efficiency are higher in comparison with those values. This catalyst showed radioselective hydroxylation of alkanes. When we oxidize these kind of bulky alkanes, <coughs> phosphorus containing divanadium polyoxometalate showed high selectivity to secondary alcohol, as shown here. This is caused by the steric effect 
of active oxygen species formed on bulky polyoxometallate. This secondary alcohol selectivity, 90%, is much higher in comparison with these values. So we succeed in appearance of specific radio selectivity by using this kind of polyoxometallate. The same catalyst also show high radio selectivity, that is paraselectivity for hydroxylation of anisole, as shown here. This 96 paraselectivity is much higher in comparison with these selectivities. You, you see here, our catalyst shows high turnover number, high turnover frequency, and high paraselectivity in comparison with these values. Various kind of aromatic can be hydroxylated, radio selectivity, as shown here. You see here, high paraselectivity and relatively high yield. In addition, we observed chemoselectivity for hydroxylation of aromatics, as shown here. This is a first example of a synthetic catalyst that can chemoselectively hydroxylate alkyl aromatics with reactive secondary and tertiary aromatic side chain CH bonds without significant formation of corresponding side chain oxygenated products. We are now studying the t detailed mechanisms, that is, epoxidation of olefins hydroxylation of alkanes, and hydroxylation of aromatic comparison study are now in progress. The same catalyst also shown high catalytic activity for bromination of various kind of subs as shown here. Even chlorination can be possible when we use lithium chloride as a chloride source, as shown here. This is a rather usual case for vanadium catalyst, but catalytic activity much higher in comparison with other catalyst. Recently, we can successfully synthesize monomu oxo bridged Divanadium site from this new hydroxyl bridge divanadium polyoxometallate. This is a structure. And this monomyoxyl bridge divanadium site can react water to form this new hydroxyl bridge divanadium site. This is crystal to crystal transformation. That means water dissociate heterolytically on this side. This is very difficult reaction, but actually monomu oxo bridged divanadium site can heterolytically dissociate water to form this new hydroxyl bridge divanadium polyoxometallate. Next, I moved on dicapa bridge polyoxometallate. This dicapa bridge polyoxometallate show high catalytic activity for oxidative homocoupling of alkynes, as shown here. 
where it's kind of aromatic alkynes can be converted this kind of product in high yield, as shown here. Not only aromatic alkynes, but also aliphatic alkynes can be converted into this kind of product in high yield. This is an energy diagram, oxidative homocoupling reaction. The important point is two molecules of alkynes can be stabilized on this dicopper site. That is a key point. This is a transition state structure. Two molecules of alkyne can be stabilized on this dicopper site. When we start, we, when we found oxidative homocoupling reactions, there are two possibilities for active site for the 1,3 dipo dipolar cyclo addition of azide to alkyne. One possibility is monocapa site is the corresponding active site. The other possibility is dicapa site is the corresponding active site. This is a very easy reaction, but mechanism is not clear. Therefore, we, we would like to demonstrate what performance our catalyst show. Actually, this dicopper containing catalyst show high catalytic turnover number and turnover frequency as shown here. There's kind of reaction that is one three dipolar cycle addition of azide to alkyne can be possible as shown here. And this is a detailed reaction mechanism. The most important thing is azide and alkyne can be stabilized or can be activated on this dicopper site. And we first demonstrate dicopper site can work as corresponding active site for this reaction. This is a transition state structure. And divanadium contains polyoxometallate, lacinary polyoxometallate, and dicapa contains polyoxometallate. All these polyoxometallate can be synthesized in water. We changed the synthetic solution from water to organic solvent. The reason is, in water, we have several problems to synthesize metal substituted polyoxometallate. For example, isomerization proceeds easily in water. Alkaline metal sometimes occupied lacunary site. Therefore, substitution could not be possible sometimes, in some cases. Therefore, we start to synthesize metal substitute polyoxometallate in organic solvent. For example, we can successfully synthesize diparadium substituted polyoxometallate in organic solvent such as acetone, and this diparadium substitute polyoxometallate were catalyzed hydration nitrile, as shown here. There's kind of nitrile can be converted into this kind of product 
in high E as shown here. So in this case, water and nitride can be activated onto palladium site. We observed cooperative activation of nitride and water on these two palladium site. And zinc is not usually introduced into the vacant site of lacnide polyoxometallate. We started to synthesize zinc substituted polyoxometallate in acetone, and we success synthesized di zinc substituted silico deca tungstate dimer, as shown here. This shows chemoselective oxidation of secondary alcohols, as shown here. Various kind of alcohols can be converted into ketones, as shown here. And we can change two zinc metals by cobalt or nickel by recognizing octahedral and tetrahedral site. And for example, this kind of tetra zinc or di zinc, di cobalt or di zinc, di nickel substituted polyoxometallate forms this kind of hollow space. And this hollow space can be covered by tetrabutyl alkyl ammonium cations. And this molecule, the solvent molecule just present in these spaces can be exchanged by various kind of Mo organic molecules. And we successfully si synthesize this kind of yttrium substituted polyoxometallate. The structure is shown here. This yttrium can work as a Lewis acid site and polyoxometallate can work as Lewis base. And this ethereum substituted polyoxometallate show high catalytic performance for cyclosylation of carbonic compound, as shown here. In this case, important thing is these metals can work as Lewis acid, and polyoxometallate can work as Lewis base in this case. And we can change various metals from ethereum to neodymium. And this is the best catalyst in this case. In addition, cyclosylation of aldehyde also possible by using this catalyst. We achieved high turnover number and high turnover frequency as shown here. And at this point, we have an idea that is polyoxometallate can work stabilizer of the cation. That means polyoxometallate would work as a base. So very recently, we tried to use polyoxometallate as a base. 
there are two strategies. One is when we increase anion charge, that means that can be possible by introduce, introducing the lacunary site in polyoxometallate. We, we increase lacunary site on polyoxometallate, anion charge increased. That is one strategy. <laughs> so lacunary polyoxo, actually lacunary polyoxometallate can work as a base. The result has been published in chemical communication this year. In addition, we calculate NVO charge of oxygen atoms by changing series of polyoxometallate. And we get an answer, simple polyoxometallate, not polyoxometallate, simple tongue state would work as a base. So we carried out one, two, phenyl diamine. We carried out reaction of one, two, phenyl diamine with carbon dioxide. For this reaction, monotone state can work as a best catalyst in comparison with this kind of polyoxometallate and this kind of organic base. There's kind of aromatic diamines can react with carbon dioxide to form this kind of product in moderate to high yield, as shown here. Of course, larger scale reaction can be possible by using this catalyst, as shown here. This tungstate catalyst not only activate diamine like this, but also activate carbon dioxide like this. This tungstate catalyst can activate carbon dioxide and diamine in the solution. That's the reason why this catalyst showed high catalytic performance for this reaction. This tank state can well catalyze reaction to amino benzonitriles, terminal propyl alcohols, and primary alkyamines at atmospheric pressure of carbon dioxide efficiently. The result is shown here. Next, I would like to talk design of heterogeneous catalyst by using polyoxometallite. So this is a lacunary polyoxometallate. This lacunary polyoxometallate is a good homogeneous catalyst for epoxidation of olefins with hydrogen peroxide. It's a homogeneous case. When this polyoxometallate have complexes with tetrabutyl ammonium cations. This kind of complex solid material obtained. This is a structure. This solid is not soluble in ethyl acetate. Not soluble, but propylene can react with hydrogen peroxide and propylene oxide obtained in high yield. However, macrocyclic olefin is not epoxidized in this solid catalyst. Actually, this solid 
is not soluble ethyl acetate one to dimethyl ethane, but actually this solid can work as a catalyst for epoxidation of one hexene. The same solid catalyst can work well for epoxidation reaction for oxidation of sulfide and silane. This can be used at least third time without significant loss of catalytic performance as shown here. And this solid catalyst shows size selectivity when we carried out competitive epoxidation of propylene and this or large orifice. In homogeneous case, of course, epoxidation of cyclic orifice can dominant proceed. However, in heterogeneous case, uh, you show, you see here, Propylene epoxidation dominantly proceed. This is the first example for size selective oxidation with hydrogen peroxide with catalyst synthesized in a bottom up process. Similar size selectivity observed for oxidation of sulfide and silane. This has been found by my student. First, student brought his data and showed me. First, I said, in ethyl acetate, the reaction should not proceed, I say. <laughs> Student tried again and again, at least 10 times. <laughs> he said, Mizuno sensei, the data reproducible. So we started. Why? So first, we asked three students to carry out the same experiment without different catalyst, synthesized by yourself, and the data were reproduced. So this phenomenon, student originality appear, but in my, in my sheet to the student, I have no statement for attempt to use ethyl acetate. This is because, or I know, the catalyst should not, should, should insoluble in ethyl acetate. So this is a student mistakes, but he happily found this kind of size selectivity. He get his PhD by this finding. And This is a usual strategy for synthesized solid catalyst by using molecular catalyst. That is immobilization. However, when we immobilize polyoxometallate on the surface modified silica with imidazole cation, the catalytic performance degrees, that is selectivity degrees, hydrogen peroxide efficiency degrees, reaction rate degrees. Therefore, 
we finally choose the surface of silica. That is, we tune length of alkyl chain, as shown here. This length is very important for the separation of bleaching of polyoxometallate. In addition, the concentrate, surface concentration of cation is very important. The size of polyoxometallate is about one nanometer, one nanometer. You see here, concentration, the distance between immediately cation is one nanometer, as shown here. In addition, this polyoxometallate minus charge is four, four minus. You see here, just four minus, four plus charges here. The charge completely compensated and size is just fitted and reaching is suppressed by this alkyl chain. When all these conditions are satisfied, this divanadium substitute polyoxometallate were immobilized. You see here, catalytic selectivity, yield, and hydrogen peroxide efficiency show original value. And also, very this year we, uh, last year we observed tin zinc modified tin oxide is a good support for this kind of polyoxometallite. We are now investigating the reason why our student have found. This is a good support for stabilize this kind of polyoxometallate. You see here, for epoxidation reaction, rather high yield and high selectivity could be achieved by using stabilized polyoxometallate on zinc modified tin oxide. The supported catalyst where catalyze various kind of epoxidation reaction as shown here, amine, silane, and sulfide oxidation as shown here. That is okay. So we apply complexization to this kind of to synthesize these complexes with nanospaces. Polyoxometallates are an ion, therefore, by choosing appropriate counter cations, the complexes form show this kind of nanospace. And this kind of nanospace can be applied to catalysis, sorption, and separation. Until now, we have successfully synthesized various kind of complexes with nanospace. And this kind of nanospace, for example, can apply shape selective sorption and separation of carbon dioxide and acetylene. Also, heterogeneous catalysis could be possible by using nanospaces and separation of orethin paraffin could be possible by using nanospace. This was a first result. We applied this kind of complexity for the separation of alcohols. For example, a mixture of 
ethanol, normal propanol, and butanol, we separate ethanol by using this kind of polyoxometallate with minus three charges. By increasing, we can, we can change it, a kind of polyoxometallate with the same size but a different charge. So from minus three charges of polyoxometallate to six minus, minus six charged polyoxometallate, you see here, anion cation interaction increased. Therefore, space volume decreased. Uh, it is easily expected. And by changing, by increasing minus charges of polyoxometallate, for example, three minus to four minus, methanol can be separated from a mixture of methanol, ethanol, and normal propanol. Even water can be separated from a mixture of water, methanol, and ethanol with a polyoxometallate with minus six charge. This is a concept. Okay. So very recently, we, we achieved a series of polyoxometallate complexes and separation of carbon dioxide from a mixture of carbon dioxide, CO, nitrogen, and oxygen can be possible. Also, separation of carbon dioxide and acetylene could be achieved. You see here, diameter, dipole moment, boiling point of carbon dioxide are very close to those of acetylene. Therefore, separation not easy. However, we achieved this separation by modifying the constituent metals of polyoxometallite complexes. So this is a summary. And First, design of highly active molecular catalyst and solidification can be achieved, as shown here. In addition, highly functionalized nanomaterials with control pore spaces and volumes system by self-organization built units can be possible. These are our recent results. So finally, I would like to say one thing. So, I would like to say, so, <laughs> so, last sentence. The principal aspect of my personality is Kesera Sera. In, Japan, in Japanese, Douni Kanarusa. However, in addition to this word, one very, there is a very important thing that is making your effort continuously. In that case, Kesera Sera. Thank you for your kind attention.